I find myself part of a very unique fraternity. Only a handful of young men on this planet have been able to experience the blessing of being part of St. Thomas Choir School. I can say in all honesty, St. Thomas Choir School was the foundation for the rest of my life. My background at St. Thomas Choir School was invaluable. St. Thomas gave me opportunities that I would never have had any other place. The St. Thomas Choir School was founded in 1919 at the request of Dr. T. Tertius Noble, organist and choirmaster of St. Thomas Church Fifth Avenue, New York City. Dr. Noble had previously been the organist and choirmaster at York Minster in England, where his boy singers all attended a choir school. When the rector of St. Thomas, the Reverend Ernest M. Styers, and the vestry called Dr. Noble to New York in 1913, Dr. Noble accepted the position with the understanding that a choir school would be necessary to achieve the musical standard desired for the parish. Six years later, his dream of establishing a school that would house, nurture, and educate the boy choristers of the world-renowned choir of St. Thomas Church became a reality. Today, nearly 100 years after the school's founding, St. Thomas Choir School remains the only residential, church-related choir school in North America and provides a unique educational, musical and social environment for its choristers. Students receive the finest in musical instruction, as well as a challenging liberal arts education to match. But even more, they learn about life in the community and about the great things young people can accomplish when they live, work, and play together in the same space. As St. Thomas Choir School nears its centennial anniversary, we look back at the school's rich history, take a glimpse into students' recollections from the school's early days, and reflect upon the remarkable vision of Dr. T. Tertius Noble. I was 10 years old, and this very nice gentleman with a mustache and a suit smiled and greeted my mother and myself and he asked me to sing a scale or two on the piano and uh, then he played a triad and said, can you sing the middle note? And I did. And he said, very good. Then he did a couple more of those and I passed. And he said to my mother, I think it will be all right if he can start in September. And I was in. In 1942, shortly after the Second World War began, uh, my brother and I um, went to the choir school and uh, we were auditioned by uh, Dr. T. Tertius Noble. And uh, for whatever good fortune, we were accepted. I do remember my audition with Dr. Noble. It was down in the choir room at the church, and um, I can remember him sitting at the piano down there, and uh, I remember being totally at sea when he gave me my audition. It was about playing three notes in a chord and being asked to select the middle note and things of that nature. My voice was good, but for the life of me, I don't think I knew where that middle note was. <laughs> I sang something, and he accepted me ultimately. St. Thomas Choir School is built on the boarding tradition. The approximately 30 boys in grades 3 to 8 board at the school during the academic year, and not just because their singing schedules require it. Life in the community is the very thing that allows the boys to achieve the musical excellence for which they are known. It is also one of the most valuable experiences the choir school has to offer. When I first arrived, uh, I can remember that as being a cataclysmic experience. I had never lived away from home before, which is, of course, one of the big things that a St. Thomas Choir Boy has to deal with for the first time in his life. 
And it ain't easy when it begins, I can guarantee you that. But you've come through it as a bigger and better person than you were before. I knew how to fend for myself and to get over the bad times myself and take care of myself. So I think that probably is one of the main things that St. Thomas gave to me and stands you in good stead in life. The first day was so full of different people, but I was made welcome and that felt good. You really bond and become a band of brothers. We would sing for over 20 hours a week. For an 11 year old, that's pretty intensive. And you're studying beyond that, and you're doing sports. So you're always together. Living with 40 boys was a very new and exciting experience. The beautiful part of St. Thomas was living away from home at that age, you never felt you were by yourself. You always felt you were under a good shepherd to take care of you. It was one uh, dining room in which we all ate together with the house mother, the headmaster and his wife were always at meals. And that was part of the uh, disciplined way of life. Uh, it wasn't cafeteria style, it was all sit-down style and uh, grace was said before meals and that kind of thing. The only thing I remember about food was when anybody had a birthday, that was exciting. We loved people having birthdays. We, of course, had to sing. But what well, the big benefit was, they brought big gallons, these five gallons of ice cream. So we all had ice cream. We all had the uniforms, and everywhere we went, we were all uh, dressed alike. And we would walk from 55th Street to 53rd Street in double lines. It was kind of fun because people would stop and look at us and we, we thought we were sort of uh, in a parade going, going to rehearsals or going to services. Our rehearsals every day were wonderful, absolutely wonderful. And Dr. Noel would come in and sit at the piano, take his suit coat off, take the handkerchief out of his breast pocket and it was always nicely scented with cologne. Put it back in and we'd do some scales to rehearse. He was urbane. He was in full command of his music and he was impeccable in his playing, in his composition and his directing of the choir. And I firmly believe if Dr. Noble had remained in England, he would be in that pantheon of romantic Victorian composers. Elvie, Monk, Owsley, Barnby, Rimbald, etc., etc., Noble. They were all in the same category of great composers for Anglican church music, and they did some beautiful compositions, beautiful. I was fortunate enough to enjoy the tutelage of Dr. Noble, whom we just worshipped. He set a standard to excel at what you're doing, and those kind words from him uh, stick with you, I think, for the rest of your life. He was the most soft-spoken, loving director that I can uh, ever remember. He was a surrogate father to his whole choir, and uh, we learned a lot from him. It was uh, extraordinary, really extraordinary. The St. Thomas Choir of Men and Boys is considered by many to be one of the world's finest choral groups, and musicians from all parts of the globe recognize the outstanding musical standards that the choir has maintained throughout its history. To sing here as a boy is the opportunity of a lifetime. Choristers are exposed to a demanding repertoire. They learn to sing at a professional level, and although quite young, they respond to the challenge with pride and enthusiasm. The 
there were wonderful concerts that uh, we would be involved in as a choir. I remember singing with the New York City Collegiate Chorale, and so those events were always uh, fun to do because it gave us a sense of <laughs> importance, I guess you might say. We sang at the World's Fair, and all of us sang there. And we sang Land of Hope and Glory, Land of the Free, and that was pretty exciting. It was the opening of the British uh, exhibition. We did sing in Carnegie Hall and several times at St. Bartholomew's, but I do remember one uh, extraordinary experience uh, when uh, there was a kind of choral uh, concert at um, St. John the Divine uh, uptown. And I think there were something like maybe a couple of hundred voices. And we had all had been training, uh, learning the music for this particular concert. And the cathedral was packed. Oh, just packed. And one of the pieces that we sang ended up in a tremendous crescendo and we were on a high C and immediately the orchestra and the choir stopped singing and for five or eight seconds we heard the echo of that final chord going down the nave and to the rear of the church and bouncing back up to the sanctuary to where we were singing. And it was about the only time we ever heard our voices actually performing because there were no real recordings in those days, but it was really a, a big thrill. That was, I think, maybe the highlight concert of my two years there. What I en enjoyed mostly, because I now miss it, is the great morning prayer music that we had. And I miss the Te Deums, the Magnificats, and then even to the Nunc Dimittis. Some of those settings were absolutely gorgeous. And I recognize it when I hear them. So sometimes I sit at the piano and play over some of those old chants. I just want to get choked up when I think of that gorgeous music. Music may define the St. Thomas Choir School, but academic education is every bit as important. The school is fully accredited and provides a high quality, hands-on education with a solid spiritual foundation. And because the teachers live at the school, they come to know the boys as more than students. They see their strengths outside the classroom, recognize their talents in other pursuits, and help them stretch and grow as individuals. When I look back, I think their standards were pretty high. I mean, in the sixth grade, I don't know if it was common to have Latin in, in those days. Certainly that was well above my head, but uh, nonetheless, I think indicated that they expected a high uh, academic performance from the students. Well, I do remember Latin because that was a, an eye-opener for me. I had never been exposed to anything like a foreign language before, and Latin was it. And I, I'm glad that the kind of education that everybody was getting was a, a more classical-oriented sort of thing because it's put me in good stead throughout life for uh, writing and uh, word derivations and things of that nature, so I'm glad that happened. While the school is blessed with a wide range of facilities right in the building, Classroom instruction is routinely enhanced through outings designed to help the boys expand their cultural horizons. By taking trips to nearby museums and taking full advantage of everything that New York City has to offer, the school lets boys be boys, even as they nurture and cultivate their intellectual and musical gifts. So my best fun was on Saturdays. We had classes, and then of course we had rehearsals every morning. And uh, in the afternoon, late afternoon, around 3 or 3.30, uh, we'd go off to the park for an hour, an hour and a half. We were called rock shiners because we'd climb around the rocks and, and just explore Central Park. But we went out there every, every afternoon, and uh, just getting out was sort of nice. 
And it was a relief. I can remember one of the interesting things was that we could figure out ways to walk from the church on a Sunday afternoon to Grand Central virtually without going outside. You could walk down <laughs> you could walk down into the basements of buildings and find tunnels that would go from one building to another, like under Rockefeller Center, for instance. You could walk for blocks under Rockefeller Center and then into one of the hotels right next to Grand Central and wouldn't even come outside until you had probably arrived at Grand Central Station. These were just the little things that kids like us would figure out how to do. And uh, it was a lot of fun and it was one of the things that I remember from my early days in New York. That last year that I was here was really a wonderful year as I reflect upon it. Really some great times, uh, especially with the sports program because I found that it kind of helps us develop a uh, camaraderie. But we had a very unique experience, especially my eighth grade year. We were, I think, considered the top private school team in the city. And everybody was gunning for us. We were undefeated. And I think the last game we had, three of the starters couldn't play it, so it was basically second stringers, and this team came in with guys that were six feet plus, and we were losing in the first few minutes. And as I was sitting there, I was thinking, of, here we are. We're undefeated. This is the last game. And we were looking forward to this all season. And we're not going to lose this game. We were losing, I believe, 11 to 5 at that moment. And the next thing you know, I think we won the game something like 70 to 31. We all came together and jumping up and down. And I talk about that because you learn a lot when you're on a field or a court. As you can see, no matter what the odds, no matter what is placed before you, if you persevere, if you have the right attitude, then you can overcome. I don't separate my time playing sports from the time I was in math class or English class or going to sing in the church. All of it was part of my development. So some may call it extracurricular. I call it something that was part of the core development of this place. In keeping with that core development, the choir school also emphasizes the importance of community service and of leadership in its many forms. Students participate in a variety of service projects throughout the year, such as donating goods to the Humane Society, organizing clothing drives, and volunteering at a soup kitchen. After Hurricane Katrina, the boys perform concerts in New Orleans to benefit the victims and they've performed at benefit concerts across the country to raise money for after-school programs in a number of underserved populations. I really think one of the, the special things about the school was that they identified that different people had different skill sets. So for me, at the school, I wasn't Mr. Academic, but um, I think I was responsible, I think I showed leadership, I think I was someone who was very inclusive. You know, they encouraged me to be myself. I think this, this school had the biggest impact on who I am as a person up to this point. It was almost as if my soul was um, developed here, in a way. I think St. Thomas gives any boy um, an extremely good foundation to continue on with his life from there on in. Just the uh, discipline of being a professional at a very young age, it gets you into the, um, into the habit of, of doing a good job with whatever you're doing. And you carry that with you, I think. The school taught discipline, academic, behavioral, musical. It was all there. And uh, I'm not sure I could have gotten it in any other kind of environment. It was an extraordinary experience. 
had a deep impact on my musical development, my personal and spiritual development, but my academic pursuits as well. I mean, very, very, very crucial. I think it was really formative. I've been at war, I've been doing a lot of things, and uh, I think St. Thomas in many ways was survival for me. And I have survived very well. It was an absolutely incredible experience. Taught me everything I think that anyone needs to know in life, like discipline, and service, and uh, yeah, getting along with other people in close proximity. Uh, just about everything that one would need to know. I think our upbringing was a proper upbringing, not only musically, but also in the manners of young people. I enjoyed a fabulous four years of culture that I would never have had before or after. Museums, concerts, the upper end of New York theater and art was open to us and I'm grateful. That was a great time in my life and I miss it. I miss it dearly. Glorious sacred music, a strong academic tradition, and a focus on character and community. These are the tangible gifts that the St. Thomas Choir School can offer. But the school is about so much more. Students and their families are transformed by their time here. As one parent says, through Sunday worship and by honoring the time we have together as a family, being a part of the choir school experience has brought us closer together. We have learned the value of the Christian message of service to the church and to one another. That's the power of life in faith and community. That's the power of the St. Thomas Choir School and of the remarkable and timeless vision of its founder nearly a century ago. I will always be proud to say that I was part of a very unique group and nobody can take that away from me. And especially when I pass by St. Thomas and sometimes I go in there and sit down and again reflect upon the times here. And I'm able to say I've been very blessed. And I just hope that these young men here as well as the ones in the future will realize the legacy of St. Thomas Church, that they will keep this tradition going on long after we're not here.